Okay, welcome back. The next feature I want to tackle is the X button here. So when we click on this X, it should actually remove the entire to-do. So not just gray it out, but it should actually fade out and delete. So it looks like this on the final version. We don't have the same icon to click on and the same colors or the animation, but the functionality when I do click on something should be the same. So let's say that I'm done with dishes, it fades out and then disappears, and it's no longer here, it's completely gone. Okay, the first thing that we wanna do is listen for a click on any of these X's. And in our HTML, remember that we made each one a span so that we can easily do that. Otherwise, if we just had an X as part of the LI, there's no way to determine if our click is on the X or if it's on the rest of the LI. So we need a span there. And now we'll go to our JavaScript and let's add in another comment click on X to delete to do. So we'll start with the click event. So dollar sign, select all spans, and we'll do dot click again. And then we need a callback function. And inside of our callback, we'll just do an alert clicked on a span, just like that. And we'll go back refresh, we click on the LI, nothing happens, but as soon as we click on the span, we get an alert that says you clicked on the span. There is one small issue that you may not have noticed yet. When I click on the span, and I click on the X, I get the alert that I expect to get, but also pay close attention as I dismiss the alert, we also get the styles that are coming from the LI click event. So what that tells us is that the span event is firing, and then afterwards, the li click event is firing as well. And that does make sense because our spans are inside of the li's. So when we click on a span, when I click on this span, for instance, in the middle, let's inspect it. I'm clicking on this span, but that span is also inside the li. So from another perspective, I'm clicking on the li. But from another perspective, I'm clicking on the UL because all of these are inside of a UL. Or on the div ID container. Or on the body. Or on the HTML element. That one click on this span is going through you know, five or six different layers. So when we add an event listener to the span or to the LI, or if we had an event listener on all of them, which I'll show you right now. So let's add another event listener here. And this one will be on the UL. And we'll just alert, clicked on UL. And we'll do one more. And this one will be on the div ID container. And this will say clicked on container div. And actually, we'll do it on the body as well. And this one will say clicked on the body. OK, so we click on the span, which is inside of an LI, inside of a UL, inside of the container inside of the body. Now let's pay attention when we refresh to the order that things fire in. So first, I click on the span, and it tells me clicked on the span. And then, I don't know if you noticed, but the li click event fired as well. That's how we got the styles there. And then the ul click event, then the container div, and then the body finally. So that example illustrates a phenomenon called event bubbling. What happens is, this event initially is triggered on the span, and that's where it originates. But then it bubbles up into parent elements. So it bubbles up into the LI, and it will trigger any LI click events. And then from there, it bubbles up to the, to the UL, which will trigger any UL click events, and so on, until it hits the HTML element where it stops. To prevent the LI click handler from triggering when we click on the span, which is inside the LI, what we can do is actually tell the event inside of the span to not bubble anymore, just to stop in its tracks and not trigger any other events on parent elements. So I'll show you that here. All we need to do, instead of the span click listener, we add in the event object. And again, this can be called E, event, EVT, any name that you want. The most common is event or E. And then what we'll do is add in a method called event dot stop propagation 
and this is a jQuery method that will stop the event from bubbling up. So it will fire on the span, but it won't continue onto the li click listener or any of these that we have for that matter. So if we save and refresh, and now I click on a span, I still get my clicked on a span, and then it stops. We don't get any of those other listeners that we had set up firing. So now that we have the span listener set up correctly, let's fill it in with the correct code. What we need it to do is when we click on a span, I'll go back to the browser, when we click on one of these, we want it to remove this li, so the li that contains it. We refresh, I click on this span, it needs to remove this li. And to do that, we can start from the span using dollar sign this, and if we just do dollar sign this dot remove, or fade out, but we'll start with remove, and we go back, all that happens is that the span goes away. We right now are removing the span, we need to remove the enclosing element, and jQuery gives us a really nice and easy way to do that. All we have to do is write this dot parent dot remove. And that will actually give us the parent element as a jQuery element. So this is a span that we clicked on. Dot parent gives us the li. Dot remove will remove the entire li. So now if I refresh, you can see it disappears. And refresh again. But if I click on the li, it just checks off. The last improvement that we could make is rather than removing it immediately, let's fade it out. So we'll do a dot fade out and start there, go back, refresh, we click and it fades out. But remember, just fading it out doesn't actually remove it. It's still here if we inspect. Instead of our UL, we still have three to do's, just two of them have display none. And we don't want that to happen. Imagine that we had a thousand to do's that we had deleted. Well, we don't want to slow things down by having a thousand hidden elements on our page. So what we'll do instead is use remove, but remember, it doesn't work just to do this. It will remove it, but it won't wait for the fade out to finish. If we want to, so I'll quickly demonstrate that. We click, it starts the fade, and then immediately after it removes. If we want the fade out to finish, all we need to do is make use of the callback we can pass in to fade out that will run afterwards. And let's give it a duration as well. Let's say 500 milliseconds to start. And then when it's done, we can't just call remove on its own. We need to call it on an element. And the element we want it to call it on is the same one that we're fading out. So we can use dollar sign this. It's important to note that the this right here is not the same dollar sign this right here. So let's walk through that, it's a little complicated. When we click on a span, dollar sign this refers to the element that was clicked on, the span. But then we're doing dot parent. So now we're working with the li that encloses the span. And then we're doing dot fade out on the li. So inside of fade out, this refers to the li, not the span. Okay, so we'll save and go back, refresh. Now we get a nice fade out. And if we inspect the UL, we only have one li left. So it fades out and then removes. To summarize everything here, the first issue we ran into was that our event, the click event on the span, was actually firing the event on the li as well after it fired the span event. So to fix that, we used event.stoppropagation, which stops it from bubbling up to other elements. And then we used dot parent to retrieve the li that is enclosing the span that was clicked on. And then we faded it out. And then when the fade out is done, we remove the entire li. In the next video, we're gonna tackle the new to-do functionality.